thank you so much. Thank you all for inviting us out to come and tell you about a little project we have going on between Dallas and Denton County. As Julie said, my name is Kimberly Sims, and I serve as the public information manager. I also have one of the engineers uh, of the project with me, Thomas Coronado. So I'll get up and give you a general overview of the project, and Tomas will give you more of the technical information for the project, and I'll pop back up and tell you about some of the great things that we're doing as far as public outreach and community involvement. Are we on? Okay. You've got to turn the clicker on so it can work. Okay. Well, we'll keep going. The 35 Express project is a design-build project led by a team made of Archer Western Granite and Lane Construction Companies. We are also joined by our uh, design partners of Parsons and HDR. For the project of this magnitude, as you can imagine, we have several different partners that we work with. Our project travels through two counties and eight cities, which means that we have at least ten partners plus the four major transportation agencies in the region, uh, the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers, the North Central Texas Council of Governments, and as well as the U.S. Department of Transportation. As many of you know, um, I-35 was originally constructed in the 50s and 60s, and it has served as an important trade route connecting uh, the U.S., Texas, and Mexico. It's listed as one of the most congested highways in Texas, and this part of I-35 sees more than 100,000 vehicles travel along this stretch of the corridor each and every day. This particular project is the largest improvement project in this part of I-35 uh, since it was open to traffic. Our project is about 30 miles long. We stretch from U.S. Highway 380 in Denton all the way south to I-635 in Dallas. There are two phases to this project. Um, AGL is contracted to construct phase one by the Texas Department of Transportation. Our part of the project is about $1.4 billion. Phase two of the project is a much larger project, is about $3.4 billion. And we begin construction on our part, which is phase one, in October of 2013, and we expect to be finished by mid-2017. Some of the improvements that we'll be making are adding an additional lane of traffic between the Sam Rayburn Tollway and US 380, adding an 18-mile reversible Texpress managed lane system. Now, this system will, will lie where the HOV system used to be. So if you travel down I-35, you've noticed that we have closed down the I-35 managed, I'm sorry, the HOV lane system um, that flows between um, Dallas and the Louisville area. We are rehabbing, reconstructing, or expanding more than 75 bridges. That includes the bridges that you see that cross the interstate, as well as the frontage road bridges. We're also adding connectivity to the LBJ Freeway and the north side of the Sam Rayburn Tollway I-35 intersection. If you're driving uh, on I-35 or on Sam Rayburn Tollway, some, in some areas you notice that you have to go up to the intersection to access uh, one of those areas. We'll be adding four direct connect ramps so that you can seamlessly co uh, commute from, from one um, facility to the next. We're also adding a new southbound Louisville Lake Bridge um, across Lake Louisville. This bridge um, it will be a great addition to the area as it adds frontage roads where there now are no frontage roads. We also have a pedestrian access across that particular bridge. And of course, lengthening and widening several of our ramps along the corridor and adding continuous frontage roads. Our managed toll lanes, um, as many of you know, they are um, a congestion management system with variable pricing. So the price changes as the amount of congestion in those lanes change. Um, it offers an additional choice to motorists. Our lanes on our particular roadway will be reversible. They will run southbound in the morning time and northbound in the evening. They will be separated from the rest of the I-35 general purpose lane by barriers. And then we have 12 different access points where people can easily get in and out of the lanes to get where they need to go. And then finally, we'll have shoulders for emergencies. So if someone happens to have a breakdown, God forbid, in those lanes, there's a way to move them safely over and for, uh, for traffic to continue moving. Our particular project um, was funded by local, state, and federal resources. We had about more than $600 million added from the Denton County Regional <coughs> excuse me, Toll Fund. We have a phased approach to construction, 
And as I mentioned earlier, AGL is responsible for constructing phase one of the project. And I'm going to bring Tomas up here um, to talk about what we're doing in this area. We've had lots of activity going on since October, and so he'll be able to give you an overview of that. Again, I would like to uh, thank, thank you all for having us here. Uh, again, my name is Thomas Coronado. Uh, I'm an estimator with AGL. Uh, so looking at this slide here, it shows basically the 35 Express corridor map. Um, for this purpose of the presentation, uh, I broke it up to three, seg three segments, south being the one in the south, in the middle, and in the north as well. And also to get a better understanding of the size of the project, um, I want to point out, point out uh, some quantities. For bridges, AGL is installing approximately 2.6 million square, square feet of bridge deck and pouring over 130,000 cubic yards of concrete. For asphalt, AGL is, is laying over a million tons and also rehabbing 35 bridges throughout the corridor. So let's get started with the south segment, which basically extends from uh, 635 to Dickerson, as you can see on the slide. <clears throat> looking, looking at the, looking the, difference, the differences between the existing or post typical, AGL is replacing the HOV lanes with the managed lanes, which are reversible at this area. Moving, moving to the overview of the south segment that involves the wishbone configuration, bridge widenings at Valley View Lane, Valwood, Parkway, Crosby Road, and Whitlock Lane, and also the reverse managed lanes as mentioned earlier, and reconstruction of Bell Line and 35 Interchange um, and Dickerson Parkway as well. So looking at the, the LBJ and 35 Interchange, Everything highlighted in yellow is incorporated into the project. Looking at the wishbone configuration, which is in the south, south portion of it, it provides access from the LBJ tollway to the uh, 35 general purpose lanes and managed lanes. Just further north of this, uh, the interchange, direct connector ramps are, are being installed to connect the two managed systems. Moving on to Beltline, uh, as you can see, this is the existing Beltline and 35 layout, where Beltline and the railroad tracks are at grade, and 35, 35 interstate travels over the two paths. One inter interesting point about Beltline, the original schematic showed Beltline being depressed. Uh, however, during the proposal phase, an te uh, alternative technical concept changed the configuration to the proposed layout which consists of three levels, um, level one being the railroad at grade, level two being Beltline elevated over the railroad tracks, and level three being 35 constructed over Beltline. Look, looking at this recent construction progress photo, uh, AGL is constructing both bridges at the same time, which are Beltline and 35. Uh, as the photo shows, you can see they were building the south, southbound side first. Um, also, the bridge aesthetics will reflect the city of Carrollton downtown aesthetics as well. Moving on to Dickerson Parkway extension. The proposed extension will provide continuation through 35 up to George Bush Turnpike Frontage Road. Since the proposal phase, AGL has been able to obtain additional right-of-way along Dickerson Parkway. Between Beltline or between, I'm sorry, between 35 and the George Bush Turnpike Frontage Road. This has led, led to a value engineering opportunity by, by um, providing embankment slopes at a 4 to 1 slope in lieu of MSC walls. By doing so, AGO has been, has been able to save the owner money. Moving on to the middle segment, which extends from George Bush Turnpike to Tuberville Road. The, the length of, of this segment is approximately 12 miles. 
Now looking at the, the existing versus the repose typical. In this in this segment, in this segment we are uh, incorporating a, a general a general purpose lane for southbound, northbound and southbound, and also the managed lanes down the center, which end at Tuberville. This this is the overview of uh, the middle segment. It shows uh, it shows adding collector distributor systems connecting the George Bush Turnpike and the SRT. Um, also uh, reconstruction of FM 407 and adding a new new bridge over Louisville Lake. Looking at the collector distributor, it will provide, as mentioned earlier, it will provide connectivity between George Bush Turnpike and the SRT. It will consist of three lanes in each direction and reduce the amount of weaving needed at this section of the corridor. Uh, the photo shows the construction progress that we're at to date. You can see how we're working on this, the substructure of the bridge on both sides of the highway. Now moving further north, 35 and the SRT interchange. AGO is, constructing, is connecting um, the SRT east and westbound to north, north 35 bound and likewise 35 southbound to the SRT east and westbound. Uh, these, floor, these four fly, uh, flyover ramps, our construction has begun on them. Uh, a unique fact about the ramps, uh, the tallest height of, of the column is 100 feet. Moving on to uh, 407, the proposed 407 travels underneath 35 uh, and FM 407 road section will consist of two through lanes, one dedicated turn lane for each direction underneath the bridge. Looking at August 2013, this photo shows the existing layout of 407 tra traveling over 35. Um, the proposed interchange reverses the layout as shown in the previous slide. Uh, looking at February 2015, AGO has switched southbound traffic to the middle and the proposed 35 southbound general purpose lanes, managed lanes and frontage roads are, are under construction. A unique interesting fact about this interchange, AGL will have placed over 100,000 cubic embankment material at this location. Moving on to uh, Garden Ridge Boulevard, AGL is providing a new wider bridge and frontage roads on both sides at this area. On the construction photo, you can see the you can see the southbound the south portion of the bridge being being constructed along 35 southbound general <coughs> purpose lane. Now moving on to uh, Louisville Lake bridges. This rendering photo shows the overview of the area. To touch on the new southbound bridge, construction started in December 2013 and is expected to be completed by spring of 2016. Then the existing bridge will be rehab rehabilitated. Uh, the south southbound frontage road lanes and the existing bridge will accommodate four northbound, I'm sorry, the new bridge, the new bridge will accommodate four southbound general purpose lanes, two reversible managed lanes, and two southbound frontage road lanes and the existing bridge at, itself would accommodate four northbound general purpose lanes, two northbound frontage roads lanes. So to kind of get a, a better understanding on the new lake bridge size, I want to point out some more quantities about the bridge. Um, AGL is pouring three, 35,654 cubic yards of concrete, um, installing installing 13 million pounds of reinforcing steel and installing 264 columns. Uh, the, br the bridge aesthetics will reflect Louisville Lake recreational activities. Now looking, looking at erecting beams uh, at the lake, um, AGL had looked at two options. One option was using a, a ringer crane as shown on the slide. 
and the other option was a beam shifter. AGL, AGL determined using the beam shifter to increase production by 25%, basically installing seven and a half to eight, eight beams per day. And this operation is a lot safer as well. So with that being said, I want to show you a video of a beam shifter in action. So this is the Archer Western project. Um, the bridge name is the Indian Street Bridge. As you can see, there's a truck with the beam getting moving, moving in place to get unloaded. And as, as the crews are getting ready to put the safety line and get the rigging set up for the beam. And the beam shifter is controlled by a remote control, as you can see. And the beams that are being lifted are 145 feet in length and weigh 95 tons. Um, it takes approximately about one hour for the beams to get set in place. And of course the video is uh, compressed in 30 seconds, which we're just going to watch one operation of the beam getting set. So they're, they're rigging the beam up. As soon as it gets all rigged up, they lift it. Set it over in place. So moving on, um, AGL is also improving four parks around 35 in Lake Louisville. These parks are Coppers Branch Park East. Coppers Branch Park, Arrowhead Park, and Highland Lakes Park. To just focus on one of the parks, uh, Coppers Branch Park East, uh, AGL is providing new parking access at the trailhead. Uh, from the trailhead to Coppers Branch Park East, a concrete trail supported by a gaming ba basic system uh, will connect the two. At the park itself, uh, it consists of a one mile trail throughout the park. Moving on to the last segment, which is the north segment, basically running from Swisher Road to uh, US 380. Now looking at the difference between the existing and proposed typical. The proposed incorporates an additional general purpose lane in each direction. Uh, this is the overview of the north segment. As mentioned earlier, one general purpose lane is being added. A few bridges are being rehabilitated and widened. These bridges are Bonnie Bray, McCormick, Loop 288, and Mayhill. Also, constructing new bridges, which are uh, North Texas Boulevard, Post Oak Drive, and Corinth. From this recent photo of Corinth Parkway, uh, we can notice that AGO has demolished the existing bridge and switched, traf switched southbound traffic to the middle. AGO is constructing southbound general purpose lanes. Um, now, now let's focus on the proposed layout of Corinth Parkway. The roadway will go underneath 35, although not shown in the photo. AGL, AGL is including Texas U-turns on both sides. Um, the, the roadway section underneath the bridge will consist of two through lanes, two dedicated turn lanes in, in each direction. This configuration will eliminate the current frontage road layout and provide a more direct route to the intersection. Uh, moving on to uh, North Texas Boulevard Bridge, uh, 35 will go go underneath North Texas Boulevard. This bridge will have two two through lanes, one to uh, dedicated turn lanes and Texas U-turns on both sides. Um, construction construction will start this year, late this year. Also, uh, two main reasons why depressing 35 existing interstate profile by 12 feet at North Texas Boulevard Bridge is to accommodate the phase two speed limit requirements and to have enough vertical clearance underneath the proposed bridge. Um, so now I'll hand it back off to Kimberly to go over outreach and opportunities. Thanks, 
Tomas. <clears throat> this particular project, <coughs> excuse me, offer us, offers us a ton of unique opportunities to get out there and get the word out about our project. Um, when we first started the project, we had hit over about 2,000 people as far as reaching out through different presentations and things like that. We had our website up and ready to go in August of 2013. We now have a web version, we now have a mobile version, and then now we also have a bi-weekly newsletter that comes out that talks about not only lane and road closures, but different processes that go on with the project. A lot of times people think that what we do is just, you know, we just snarl up traffic and we move things out of the way, but sometimes we feel that if we are able to explain some of our processes to the general public, they're able to understand the construction project a little bit better. So that newsletter is not only um, to provide information on updates on construction, but to explain some of the process that we have available. We also have a section um, called business, <clears throat> our business access page, and basically we are relocating a lot of businesses along I-35, and so people want to know where these businesses are going. Um, one of our businesses that people ask about a lot is a little barbecue place in Lake Dallas. Um, I just thought I would uh, never stop getting phone calls about where this barbecue place moved. But these are, it, these are businesses that we would place on this website, of course, with their permission, or if um, we are doing work that may hamper the visibility of a business. We are doing utility work in front of a business on Valwood Parkway, so we would have information about how to get to that business on that website as well. We, again, we do have a website, 35express.org, the e-newsletter. Um, we have text alerts, a very robust Facebook and Twitter page. Um, we do notice that every time there is a weather event, our numbers uh, go up. Um, a lot of our growth has been, well, all of our growth on our Facebook and Twitter pages has been very organic. I believe we are up to almost 3,500 uh, likes on Facebook and about 2,000 likes on Twitter. And so this helps us to, to form a connection between the traveling public and to keep them updated with real-time information of what's going on um, around I-35. We do offer community meetings twice a year, usually the spring and the fall of each year. And then quarterly, we have what we call our business owner information meetings. And this is a way to bring those businesses in, have them to meet with our construction team and our engineer team to help them understand what's going on. Um, we have mitigated some issues during these meetings. And it's also a time for these businesses to be able to get out and network with one another and create some new business opportunities. And um, we do have a PI office, which has been a great concept for a lot of the mega projects that TxDOT is doing around the region. It gives the traveling public a place to go where they can actually um, look at a schematic without trying to uh, blow the image up on their screen. Um, it also gives them a place to go or a person to talk to very easily when they have questions or concerns about um, the different construction projects that are going on. We do have several subcontracting opportunities. Tomas heads this up as well. Um, at the height of this job, we ought to have about 900 people total working on the job in various, uh, in various areas. And then finally, if you need more information, you can go to our website, um, or you can also call me, 214-483-7778, and Tomas and I will take any questions if you have any. Well, thank you.